now, for your big entertainment, we bring you Armchair Theatre. Qualified shorthand typist. Oh, the second shot. You've got the wrong lift. Yes. Wrong lift. Oh. That one doesn't stop on the way up, only on the way down. No, don't get out. Oh, you shouldn't have got out. It would have taken you to the seven. Eventually. Still, she can't catch the other one. You should have stayed on. You'd be better with the fast one. Yes. The one you just got out of. Should have stayed on, really. Yes. Fast up, slow down. Stops at each floor, but only going down. The lift you would have got is the slow up and fast down. Still, you can't stop that one on the way up. Huh? It's coming back now. Oh, which one? The fast stop. That'll do you. The, uh, Slow down. Uh, here she is. Uh, this is right. Mm -hmm. There. All set now for the seven. Thank you. Not bad, eh? Nice legs. Nice bottom. They always wear roll-ons at interviews. I'm a fully qualified short-hand typist. Peter didn't ask to come into the world. I invited him. Well, you're going to have to first we've seen today, we can't let you know straight away, but we will write to you this week, Miss Durbin, one way or the other. And if we should find ourselves suited elsewhere, Miss Durbin, we'll telephone you before five this evening. Oh. Before five this evening. I see. Thank you. Since you've been away in Detroit, our normal routine has been to inform all applicants by letter. Detroit says that takes 18% more time. It's only a minor point, sir. Our Detroit branch made 15% more profit than we did last year, Mr. Boatwright. Hardly minor. So let's start the day as we mean to go on, eh? Well, naturally, if That's Detroit right. says. Who's next? Yes, please, Miss Fletcher. Miss Keith Williams, sir. Keith Williams? She's hyphenated. Morning. I say it's frightfully good of you to see me. I only wrote on spare. Good morning, Miss Keith Williams. This is Mr. Suckley, one of our directors. Oh, so it's you who wants the private secretary. Do sit down, Miss yes. Williams. What a lovely sunglass or rather bliss. It's like an earring. Earring? Yes. Well, before we start talking about you, Miss Keith Williams, let me tell you a little of what we do here. You make absolutely vast black pumps, don't you? Great cast iron leviathans. <laughs> there are three main types of pump. Reciprocal, rotary and centrifugal. And who's in gold? Well, these three pumps... Of Orient are. <laughs> Sorry, it just comes out. I look really as daft as I am cabbage looking. Yes, well, uh, thank you very much for coming, Miss Williams. We'll let you know. Something. Oh, thank you. These are the short-listed ones? Yes, sir. Makes you think about the others, doesn't it? Next, please, Miss Fletcher. <clears throat> Will you go ahead, please, Miss Fletcher? Excuse me. Have I time for a phone call? Well, I think I can spare you a few minutes. There are some public telephones outside in the corridor on the left. Thank you. Personnel office, Miss Fletcher speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Skinner. Yes, we have found out about your industrial benefit. You don't get any. Oh, I'm quite sure, Mr. Skinner. Mr. Boatwright is not in the habit of making mistakes. Goodbye. Hello, Brenda. Steve. I'm glad you got back all right. He prepared himself on the train. Yes, he kept talking about boats. Oh, yes, I told him about the lifeboat. Get the 
I don't know yet. I'm just waiting to see your eyes. He's just seeing somebody else. Oh, damn, his stocking's gone in the other leg now. Your basket, Mr. George. I have a seat. Why, you don't think he took one look at my letter and said, yes, we must have her, do you? Of course. Oh, well, you're my friend, so you buy us. Does he to drink tea? Yes, mostly milk. <laughs> He's just said, Mummy's working. <laughs> Mommy working. That's a bit optimistic. Are you depressed? Oh, no, no, it's just that well, this is the 14th job I've been up for and I haven't clicked yet. Perhaps it is. <sighs> anyway, Robert ought to do something. Oh, my dear Brenda, that chance of my getting even a five bob postal order at that joke of a husband of mine. Well, look, Brenda, I only phoned to see if he behaved himself on the train and I'll pay you <coughs> that if I get this job. Listen, Brenda, I've got to go now. It's a good day for Germany, is it? Good day for Germany. Right. Bye-bye. Mr. Bertrand will see you directly. I said directly, Mrs. Hobley. He's still engaged. Would you kindly take a seat? Oh, but I thought you said... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm awful. I've always seen little things like that. It's 9.52, sir. You're running seven minutes late. Already? All right, Miss Bertrand. I'll make it up. Send in the next lady, please. I'll tell you when you've made it up, sir. Mrs. Hobley. Thank you. My name is Whitehurst. Come in. Oh, uh, yes, Miss Whitehurst, 10 o'clock. Will you please take a seat? Yes, come in. Go on. Good morning, Mrs. Hobley. This is Mr. Sutcliffe, one of our directors. And don't forget to be the doctor. Do sit down. I see by your letter... Oh, excuse me. I see by your letter that you worked for Pollyanna Plastics before you were married. But you haven't worked since. You are now 27. In June. Well, 26 then. Yes. And you now wish to resume office work? Yes, sir. You haven't, in point of fact, worked in any office for six years. Uh, no, sir. Yes. Well, let's see. Before, Before you start... start sorry. Oh, no, please. No? Well, I, I, I did interrupt. Were well, you going to state some condition, Mrs. Hobley? Well, um... Do go on. Well, it's just that if you did find me suitable, I should have to leave sharp at four. Sharp at four. Every day, I'm afraid. I just thought I'd mention it. You didn't mention it in your letter, Mrs. Hobley. My letter? No, no. I suppose I should have done, but I thought if I did, you wouldn't see me at all. You'd be right. See, every time I've mentioned it in previous letters, I haven't even had a reply. And you get replies if you omit to mention the fact that you have to leave at four. Yes, like now, for instance. Yes, sir. I get replies. But not the job. Well, uh, anyway, thank you very much for seeing me, sir. Perhaps one day you might have a job where I could finish at four. I, I could come for an interview at a moment's notice. I only live just up the road, you see, by the gasometer. No, you're looking in the wrong direction. That's the Rembrandt laundry. I moved to the right. It's very nice. Well, uh, thank you very much. Is it, sir? Uh, is it that you have another job to do it for, Mrs. Hobbit? Well, I collect my son from school. He's only five, and I get... Uh, oh, that's such irrelevant, isn't it? I think you mean irrelevant. No, there's... I do that, too. <laughs> no, I, I do see you have a problem, Mrs. Hobbit, but it's... Uh, I wish you could help. It's the four o'clock, I'm afraid. It would mean that you'd be away from work for a total of eight hours a week. Uh, couldn't your husband collect him sometimes? I'm getting a divorce. I do have a girlfriend, only... Uh, what about her? Well, she lives in Walmart. I see. I had thought of moving to Walmart, but I think it's much more important for a child like Peter to have some sort of roots, even if it's only staying in the same place for a few years. Well, anyway, thank you again. Um, Coleridge said something nice about a tree getting more out of life, staying in one place, that we do always on the move. See? Oh, yes, yes. I'm never very sure about poets. I went to 12 schools and not much stuck in. Really? Mm -hmm. You didn't put that down in your letter either, Mrs. Hobley. No. It's uh, not a very complete letter, is it? The only truthful thing in it's the address. But I am good at shorthand, though. Well, that's really what I'm looking for. And I'm only just down the road. I, I can see you from there. I mean, not you. I, I, I mean the building. Mrs. Hobley, it really is very kind of you to give us a guided tour of West London. Don't think we're unappreciative. But I personally am looking for a private secretary. I don't know what Mr. Boatwright's looking for. Yes, well, uh, 
I'm just going. You see, the reason there's a vacancy at all, Mrs. Hobley, is that Mr. Suckley's previous secretary was dismissed for having time off. So, naturally, he's a little sensitive. Anyway, what we do for all applicants is to phone them the same day if we're suited elsewhere. So, if you don't hear from us by five o'clock today, you can take it that you've been successful. Morning. If you watch the gasometer for long enough, you'll see it start to rise. They fill it up in about half an hour. Really? It takes five hours to reach the top. I've watched it. You're luckier than I am, Mrs. Hobley. Good morning. Thank you very much for coming. my second thought. I shouldn't say anything about the gasometer. Good morning, Miss Whitehurst. This is Mr. Sutcliffe, one of our directors. Good morning, Mr. Sutcliffe. Please sit down. Uh, first of all, can you tell us, can you work the full hours of 9 to 5, Monday and Friday, and until 6 the rest of the week? Of course. Now, before we start talking just about... Just one moment, Mr. Boatwright, do you mind if just this once we talk about Miss Whitehurst first? Certainly, sir. Well, Miss Whitehurst, can you tell us a little about yourself? At present, I'm employed as the personal secretary of Mr. M.C. Chapman, managing director of the Taplow Regulating Company. And how long have you held this post? Three years, sir. And before that? I worked for Cowley Automatics on the Bath Road in a junior capacity. You are now? Twenty-two. What sort of work do you do for Mr. Chapman? All his business correspondence and most of his personal letters. He's also a gentleman farmer and I tend to his personal books. Your shorthand speed? 200 words a minute, 60 typing. Would you give the young lady a pencil and paper? Oh, yes, sir. Perhaps Mr. Boatwright can tell you what we do here. You could take it down as dictation. Certainly, sir. All right. Most of our work here is administrative. We design oil refineries, but do not make any of the equipment ourselves. In such an undertaking, several types of pump are used, reciprocal, rotary, and centrifugal. This last group is divided into two classes, the actual process units and what we call the off-sites. These include the off-site pumps, motors, drivers, compressors, and have nothing to do with leaving sharp at four. No, uh, as you were. Nothing to do with the refining of oil. Off-sites include everything not connected with the actual process of refining. Now, our main concern is with reciprocal, centrifugal, and gasometer pumps. No, I mean, uh, would you read that back, please, Miss Whitehouse? Most of our work here is administrative. We design oil refineries, but do not make any of the equipment ourselves. In such an undertaking, several types of pumps are used. Rotary, reciprocal, and centrifugal. This last group is divided into two classes the actual process units and what we call the off sites. These include the off site pumps, motors, drivers, compressors, and they have nothing to do with re correction, refining of oil. Off sites include everything not connected with the actual process of refining. Now, our main concern is with the centrifugal, reciprocal, and dishonest pumps. Well, I don't know where Mr. Boatrack got all that from, but. You obviously know your stuff. All right, Mr. Bertrand, carry on. What we do for all applicants, Miss Whitehurst, is to phone them the same day. They're, they're unsuccessful, so if you don't hear from us by five today, you can take it that a letter of engagement is in the post for you. I have your pencil. Oh. Good yeah. morning, gentlemen. That's the one engager. Oh, the there are another 15 to see, sir. Can you see them? I'm buzzing off. Ah, I think the gasometer's filling up.
You, Brenda. No, no, not yet. As a matter of fact, I thought you were home telling me I hadn't got it. They said they'd phone if they were suited. I didn't fancy my leaving at four. They're very nice about it. What a bit. Yes, it would have done me lovely being just down the road. Five, they finish. Well, how's Peter? Fine. Had a nice walk along the front, did you? Lovely. Well, look, Brenda, I'll, I'll be on the 10 10 tomorrow morning. I won't come down today. Are you very disappointed? Oh, no, no. Well, it's just that I've got the paper and there might be something that I could chase up. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. 10 10. Bye bye. Housekeeper. Well, that might be me. About as mature as I can get. Let me go up now. Ooh, what a housekeeper, though. Look at me. No, on second thoughts, don't. You really do need a 38, madam. Why don't you try a WX or an OS? Or even an SOS. <laughs> Solicitor's office, nine to five. Come on, tick away the hours till five o'clock. Twitch a bit faster. Secretary to six, one Saturday and four. Young lady with a flair wanted for selling direct to housewives. I can't even sell myself. There must be some woman who wants a lady of 26 winters, nine to four or eight pounds a week. Well, nine then, with a flair. I had a flair, didn't I, Robert, getting you as a husband? Clerk, typist, 9.30 to 6.15. Still, we're not everybody's money, either of us. Acquired taste, that's us. 200 guests, you got the full tax rebate, and Dad sold his insurance to pay for it all. It's a pity we didn't acquire the taste for each other. Lady demonstrator must be mobile. Madonna, I'm obey. Still, I won't make the same mistake again. And well, that's a lot of help now. It's a big laugh with you living in Ongo with that underfloor heating expert and me. Clerk of bleak typist, nine to five. Yes, sir, I'm a fully qualified oblique and would like to apply for the advertised position. And me and Fulham, a million mental miles away. Domestic posts. Whoa. Come on. Bring up. Bring me up. Listen, I'm talking to you. Don't keep me suspended. Tell me. Just ring. Ring. That's all you've got to do. So simple. Fulham 7901. It'd only take a second to tell me that you've given the job to a girl who didn't go to 12 schools. She went to two, both in green belted box. And she's willing to work till five on Mondays, six on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, and even then she wouldn't dream of leaving a second before five on Fridays. The early nights tonight. 
I would if I could. I'd work from dawn to keep Mr. and Mrs. Hobley apart. I know luncheon vouchers. I wouldn't care. Just give me the job from nine till four. And oh, we never work Saturdays. Oh, of course not, Mr. Bertrand. Of course not, Mrs. Hobley. And we will phone you if we're suited. Yes, sir. Tell all these were suited. There's just one I want to retain. I haven't decided on her yet. Very good, sir. Oh, uh, sir, I wonder if you're doing anything on Thursday evening. I'm giving another of my little wine and cheese parties. About cider cup and things, just a few friends. I wondered if you'd care to drop in. Uh, I love to, Miss Fletcher. How lovely, yes. Uh, let me see, though. Uh, what day did you say? Wednesday? Yes, I am free. Thursday is the golfing dinner. Oh, oh no. You said Thursday, oh, didn't Thursday, you? Thursday, sir. Just a little supper party in our new flat. I would so like you to see it. And to meet Rosemary, with whom I share. Of course. Well, you know I'd love to. I don't have to tell you that. But Thursday, it's my annual golfing dinner. Any other day but Thursday. What a pity. That's got me beat. What a pity. I could change it. What? Oh, no, certainly not. I couldn't allow you to upset your arrangements because of me. No, no, I wouldn't permit that. In any case, I'm not the boss of your private life as well. Perhaps another time, sir. You know I'd love to, Miss Fletcher. I'm so sorry. Well, this is the second, no, the third time you've asked me, and I'm always booked. Oh, it doesn't matter. I just asked in passing. Oh, but it does. For one thing, it gives a completely wrong impression that I'm always on the task. <laughs> in actual fact, I spend most evenings at home now, now that I'm on my own. Anyway, Miss Fletcher, I do promise that if you let me know at the earliest next time, I'll do my damnedest to be there. Right here, sir. Better luck next time. <laughs> well, I'd better just go and telephone the applicant. Yes, and Trevor's personnel. Should we decide on you? When would uh, you be able to start, right, huh? A Monday week. I'd have to give a week's notice. Oh, dear. Look, Miss Whitehead, we should have made this clear to you this morning. We have to have someone who can start next week. Your advertisement stated Monday week. Uh, yeah, a, a printing error, I'm afraid. I wish I'd mentioned it to you this morning. It's entirely my fault, Miss Whitehead. I am sorry. That's all right. Well, you can't have me, then. I'm afraid not. Sorry to drag you here this morning for nothing. Oh, never mind. Thank you for telephoning. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Whitehurst. Mrs. Sockley? Yeah? Ran into a snag with Miss Whitehurst, sir. She can't be with us for five weeks. She uh, has to give a month's notice, but only at the end of the month. She couldn't be with us before December the 7th. Oh, hell. Well, why wasn't this found out before? All right, all right, enough said. Any of those who came afterwards any good? No, sir. Well, put in another ad and start again. I wouldn't mind waiting a week or two for Miss Whitehurst, but not five. I'll, uh, I'll advertise for an older woman. I don't mind what you do, as long as she's efficient and available. Just to give me some sort of yardstick, sir, am I right in thinking the ideal person for the job would be someone, well, someone like my Miss Fletcher? Oh, yes, Miss Fletcher would be ideal, but you'll never get anybody like hers, except yourself. Oh, don't be like that, sir. She did take me ten months to find, after all. Yes, well, I can't wait around for ten months. Besides, there's bound to be other Miss Fletchers floating around wanting a change of scene. Advertise, suck in her eyes. Do something. I'll do my best, sir. Yes, Miss Keith Williams, we are suited. But Mr. Boatwright does thank you for coming along this morning. Thank you. Goodbye. Lunch, Miss Fletcher. Oh, uh, sir, excuse me just a sec. I know you don't mind my mentioning it, but you have some loose threads hanging from the cuff of your trousers. Oh, have I, Miss Fletcher? Just let me give them a quick snip snip when it's worn. Oh, thank you. Oh, just a minute. There. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Thank you, I never noticed. Oh, well, you know what men are. Yes, I am one. <laughs> well, then you know, don't you? If you let me have them, I could do them properly for you. I know you haven't any one at the moment. Oh, well, I'll take them to the cleaner. No, no, really, it would only take me half an hour. Yes, well, I'll let you have them, eh? And not now, because I'm going to lunch. And my pub gets crowded enough as it is without attracting any more people in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> collected that gallon jar of cider yet, have you? Oh, dear. No, he's not coming this time either. It's some golfing dinner. Yes. Rosemary, the man at the off license won't mind if you take it back again. Yes, I know this is the second time you've returned it, but you just have to tell him that we've had to cancel the party. Well, Rosemary, tell him that next time we really will buy it. And drink it. Yes. Yes, bye-bye. Yes, I'll get a cut, loaf. Half an hour, Pete, that's all. Must have run everybody by now, except me. Well, even if they were doing it alphabetically, they'd have got to me by now. Got to the H's. They're going to drink. Had hundreds there, though. Perhaps it's taken them all afternoon. Pete, tell me, are they going to give me this damn fiddling job or not, are they? Oh, I mean, it's not that important. They've already taken out a court order for the gas. Why can't they just bring me straight away instead of just leave me hanging? They got my measure all right. Oh, yes. They knew I wanted the job. Recognize me to the soul. I wonder if they ever meet anything they don't understand. They probably salute it or shoot it. I've got to get a job in the end. Pete Law of Averages. You've got to love your old mum, Pete, and that's a fact. You've got to, because everybody else has suddenly gone off the idea. 28 minutes to go, Pete, and no phone. They've got less than half an hour. Hobby speaking. Mr. Hobby speaking. Robert. Robert, I, I'm expecting a very important call. Will you, will you kindly get off the phone? Well, look, darling, you haven't heard from me for nine months. Eleven and a half months. Yes, well, I, I, I know you must be hurt and angry, and well, let's face it, bitter. Still reading those women's serials, I see. Jean, I know you could cut me off if you wanted to, but then I'd have to ring back again and again. In fact, if I put a matchstick under my receiver, it would leave your phone permanently engaged. <laughs> then no one could get through. Only you know how to corrupt a matchstick. Uh, oh, darling, uh, please listen and try and understand. This is hell's difficult for me. This is... I, I feel we should start again. Pick up the old threads. <laughs> we had a lot of laughs. And, and, and I'm sorry, too, about the lack of allowance, but uh, cash has been very, very tight by it. I'll hurry you. He said, uh, sorry, old foot, no can do. Just like that. Robert, since you left Peter and me and went off with that dark-rooted gentleman 11 months ago, we've neither seen nor heard from you, but we survived. You stopped the money last ember day, and I must admit we had a muted Christmas, but we still survived. In fact, Robert, we survived much better without you than with. Oh, look, Hart, you, you know, I, I had to sort myself out. And I've sorted myself out. I now realize that not only do I not love you anymore, but well, what's even more shattering, I don't even like you. How you could go to my father and get 50 pounds out of him a, a week after you left us, I, I don't know. You bragged on the assumption I'd rather cut my tongue out than tell my parents I don't make a girl of our marriage, and you were still right. They didn't know until you got 50 pounds. However, they know now, Robert. I'm very, very sorry I married you. Peter, 
And you're not only wicked, but worse than that, you're grossly irresponsible. Oh, look, huh? Look, I'll go through, Robert, on the grounds of your desertion. I won't embarrass you with the real thing. But if you don't cooperate, I shall ring Mr. Burton at your firm's head office and I shall tell him exactly how you spent your firm's 1,100 pounds. Gee. Will you get off the phone, please, without any, any matchsticks or any other funny business? So I went off the rails once. Who cares about that? I don't. The important thing is we were going in different directions. Now, please, please, will you get off my phone? That's what you really want. Goodbye, Robert. Adios, amigo. A bugle to a shunhook. Five o'clock, they back up. And no phone. No phone. Oh, I must have music. Abney Gardens, Fulham, from her dear friend, Mr. Charles Elmer Fugles, just up the road. Rain, rain, go away. Oh, dear lovely Fugles, you great lolloping fiberglass mountain, my Kubla Khan, my Mr. Boatwright, who likes Coleridge, Shall I be your damsel with a dulcimer? For I shall feed on empire honey and taste the pasteurized milk of paradise. Come down, bum, 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 bum. She's quite unsuitable, didn't I tell you? Well, I didn't know which letter you decided to keep back, sir. Not until I've been through the entire 19. She is the only outstanding lady. Yes. Well, you'd better phone her then. I, I must have had a mental blackout. The truth of the matter is, Sutcliffe didn't like one of the applicants, not one. Is that her letter, sir? Uh, yes. I'd better go and phone her before five. We're in the cart, I'm afraid, Miss Fletcher. At least I am, which is hardly the same thing. Oh, but it is, sir. Personnel is in the doghouse. We both are. That's very comforting. You're very good to me, Miss Fletcher. Oh, dear, I must be getting old, losing my touch. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You're not old. You're a young man still. I shan't see 38 again. Who will? I mean, it's no age at all, sir. Not for a man. Miss Fletcher, I tell you everything, don't I? Yes, sir, I think so. Would you sit down? Something arose today which, which concerns you personally. Shall I tell you about it? It isn't unpleasant, is it? Oh, no, no. Pleasant, eh? Well, I think I should like to hear it, then. How long have you looked after me, Miss Fletcher? Oh, it's nearly two years now, sir. And nobody has done it better, ever. I mean that. Oh, well, that's very nice to hear, Mr. Boatwright. Well, Mr. Sutcliffe 
has demanded that I release you from this office to be his private secretary. He's done what, sir? He's been on the intercom four times this afternoon. First complaining that I hadn't got him a suitable secretary, then to order me to advertise in the newspapers. Then the third time he said he didn't want an outsider, he wanted you. <sighs> Lord knows who put the idea into his head. He wouldn't have thought of it for himself. I know him too well. Of course, I told him it was out of the question. Naturally, I said no. Oh, yes, Mr. Fletcher. I said straight out, no. Then he, he buzzed me a fourth time, insisting that I release you. I fought like a demon, Miss Fletcher. Oh, I knew you would, sir. But there's really no need, because I wouldn't go to him anyway. Exactly, Miss Fletcher. Exactly what I told you. Oh, yes, sir. I'm much too fond of, of your department ever to think of going. You are? Oh, yes, sir. I wouldn't think of leaving you. Please have no fear of that, either now or in the future. That's very encouraging, Miss Fletcher. Gives me quite a lift to hear you say that. It's just that he's so clever when he puts on the pressure. Said he'd be willing to pay you an extra three pounds a week. At this, quite frankly, I hesitated. Then he said immediately that you were too good for your job in personnel and ought to have a higher position as secretary to a director of the company. I then realized what he was trying to say. I was standing in your way. And he's right, Miss Fletcher, I was. After some quiet thought, I had to admit to myself that if I were in your position, I would accept the transfer. It's all very flattering, I must say, sir. But I still wouldn't think of leaving you. As I anticipated. I hope you don't think it vain of me to say that. Oh, no, sir. You know me as well as anyone. Right. Well, now we come to the one favourable aspect of your transfer, the, the only one, and I should like to tell you what it is, because it is for this one particular reason, Miss Fletcher, that I should very much like you to transfer. But you can't, sir. You don't want me to go, do you? Of course not, haven't I just said? No, there's, there's only one reason I could let you go. It's to do with your private life. Excuse me for stating it so baldly as that. I'm awfully bad at this sort of thing. You must think me a dreadful fool. Oh, no, I, I don't, sir. I never could. I think you're one of the... One of the most sincere and sensitive men that I've ever met. <clears throat> Miss Fletcher, should you do me the courtesy of transferring, I should very much like to but do you I, the courtesy I, I really must go, sir, and telephone Mrs. Hopley before five. It worries me when I have to do something. Miss Fletcher, whoever gets you will be a very lucky man indeed. I'll definitely never leave you, sir. Mr. Sutcliffe? Yes? Ah, oh, boat right. I suppose you want your usual rundown on this afternoon's board meeting. No, sir, no. I you don't want to know how you fared in the annual salary review. Come off it. Well, how'd I get on, sir? You'll be two fifty a year better off at the beginning of next month. Well, that's very nice, sir. Well, you knew it was on the cards. I didn't know that much was on my cards, sir. No, no, no. I was telling the board this afternoon that since you've become head of personnel, we've had less labor trouble in the past 12 months than in the past 10 years put together. That means I've given you more labor trouble, sir. Huh? Well, you know what I mean. Listen, Boatwright, I've had the most marvelous idea. Why can't I have Miss Fletcher and you get someone else? <coughs> Me part with my Miss Fletcher, sir? Well, you said yourself she's too good for you and wants to get on. Well, this would be an opportunity for her. A step up the ladder. You tell me yourself that any common shorthand typist can do your work. Well, sir, Miss Fletcher knew about the vacancy four weeks ago when it was put up on the notice board. If she wanted to come to you so badly, sir, why didn't she? Yes. Yes, why didn't she? Uh, of course, she's a very loyal person, I know, but... I knew it's merely a question of loyalty, and she knew you wouldn't want to part with her. Now, come on, Boatwright, give her a break. Let her come upstairs. This is where she belongs, after all. Boatwright. Uh, you're going a bit too fast for me, sir. Could I buzz you back on this one? Yes, certainly, certainly. Think about it over the weekend. I don't want to rush you. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh sorry, love. There we are. Hey, see that, World Pigeon? Three minutes to go. It's not bad, is it? Thank you. Not at all suited for the job. 
private secretary. Nothing private about me. Walter, and I'm promoted from the ranks of the unemployed. It's very smart and feminine without being too distracting. The ideal shirt waist for the working girl. Of course, I won't be starting there for at least a week. I don't know why I'm doing it all in a mad rush. Two minutes to go. I must stop looking. No, they can't. I can't. Not with two minutes to go. It must be Mum. That's a good day for Jennifer. It's rather it's a far down the What about his dad then? His blood pressure's gone up again. No. I, I, I won't accept it. They can't just, just, just ring up at two minutes to five. I'm not accepting it. I'm not accepting any calls. I'm not here. I'm engaged. You're too late. It's five o'clock. Your time is up. Go away! And I've checked my clock with Tim. Yes, Albert, I would like to hold on a little longer. You're too late. I'm starting Monday week at Centre Bugles. Go away. You're too late. I've already got the job. The only one I ever got out of 14 interviews. It's mine. You gave it to me. Hello, Fulham 7901. Could I speak to Mrs. Hobley, please? It's the personnel department, Centripetal. Yes, Mrs. Hobley speaking. Oh, Mrs. Hobley, I am so sorry to be so late in phoning you. It's just to say that we aren't suited for the vacancy for which you applied this morning. Oh, good. That's quite all right. Goodbye, then, Uh, You are definitely suited. Oh, quite to play. Rain, rain, All finished then, Miss Fletcher? Yes, sir. I managed to get through to Mrs. Hobley eventually. And did you apologize to her for keeping her waiting? Oh, yes, sir, I did. Yes, well then, where are we? Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, please sit down, Miss Fletcher. Um, how well do you know me, Miss Fletcher? Oh, oh, that is a question, sir. It's about two years, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, during that time, have you ever found me out in a lie? Well, certainly not, sir. I've never known you to lie. Of course, I've never felt the justification for telling one until five minutes ago. I hope you'll forgive me. Oh, certainly, sir. But what is it? <clears throat> yes. Miss Fletcher, when Mr. Sutcliffe buzzed me that fourth time this morning, he gave me an inspiration. I didn't hesitate any longer. I said... Yes. I said, yes, Miss Fletcher, we were delighted to, uh, to go to his office with the greatest of pleasure. He was overjoyed and said he would pay you an extra three pound a week. You said yes, sir. You said yes, Mr. Bertrand. I did, Miss Fletcher, and for this very special but reason. I don't want to leave you. How could you say yes? How could you? How could you possibly agree after all these years? I don't want his three pounds a week. I want to stay here with you. Uh, Miss Fletcher. I don't know how you could say yes. I, I don't really. It's most hurting. Don't you want me anymore? That is the very reason I, I said yes. If I'd been unsatisfactory, why didn't you give me the statutory one month notice? It would have been far less painful than palming me off on someone else like this. I could have quietly worked out my one month's notice and just as quietly left. I wouldn't have bothered anyone. But if I waited a month, the opportunity would have gone. Yes, Mr. Suffolk would have found someone else. Well, he can, sir, for all I care. And that is speaking very frankly. Miss Fletcher, do you think I would make you go if you didn't want to? But I don't want to. But Miss Fletcher, don't you realize that if you go... But I, I will go. I shall resign. 
That's what that right letter from Mr. Sutcliffe deploring his tactics and forcing you to give me up. Oh, no, no. Well, I shall not embarrass you, sir, but I shall embarrass Mr. Sutcliffe. To begin with, I shall telephone his wife and tell her about Miss Cookson in Goodson and Dispatch. No, but there is another aspect of this which no, I'm sir, trying I'm to tell I'm sorry. You. I don't see why I should remain unscathed. He's got away with his weekends at Tags Island long enough. Everyone here knows about Miss Cookson. I think it's time his wife was put in the picture. He's done this to me, to both of us. So I shall resign. I shall then be free to give him a taste of his own medicine. Miss Fletcher, I agree to your transfer because while you remain in my office, I am unable to accept any of your kind invitations to your supper parties. Now or in the future. Perhaps I'm being selfish and wanting you transferred so that I can attend your supper parties. If you think I'm being selfish, then I will buzz Mr. Sutcliffe and tell him you wish to remain in personnel. The choice is yours, Miss Fletcher. Oh, but, sir, I mean, uh, well, you, you've never said you, you... You've never mentioned it before. No, I tried to, indirectly. Now you've forced me out into the open. And that's why you could never come to my supper parties before. Miss Fletcher, it is an unwritten law of this firm that executives do not associate with office personnel out of working hours. Everybody does it, I know. But as personnel welfare officer, I felt it incumbent upon me to uphold this unwritten law rather than lead the way to violate it. Mr. Sutcliffe can do what he will. Oh, Miss Fletcher, it was very difficult for me to keep refusing your kind invitations, but do you see now how impossible it would be for me to accept them? If I transfer to Mr. Sutcliffe's office... I should be delighted to attend any of your supper parties on any day you care to name. Because I would no longer be included as one of your office personnel. Exactly, Miss Fletcher. Oh. So if I transferred on Monday, you could come on Thursday, then. Oh. Ah. Oh, dear, that really is my golf night, Miss Fletcher. Oh, Miss Fletcher, if I made a mistake, I do apologize. I, I know don't want the extra three pound a week, but I did think you hadn't invited me to your supper parties out of politeness. I... Yes, I see I've made a mistake. Well, I will, buzz, Mr. Sutcliffe. It'll be quite all right. Oh, yes, sir. Um, after Thursday, you could come then. You wouldn't feel embarrassed. Miss Fletcher, I'm never embarrassed with you. Certainly, you just give me a buzz on your next festive occasion, and I shall be pleased and touched to attend. But buzz you from Mr. Sutcliffe's office. I shall be delighted, Miss Fletcher. Delighted. Good night, Miss Fletcher. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> Sir? Yes? Miss Fletcher is delighted to come to you, sir. Excellent. Good work. I'm getting a new girl on Monday, sir, so you'll have to stay with her. Yes, that's fine. Uh, Miss Fletcher's uh, salary, sir. She wants more? No, sir, I want more for her. Okay, 30 bob. No, sir. Three pound, I thought, sir. And I don't really want to part with her. All right, all right, though. Try three. Good night. Good night, sir. Have a nice weekend. Oh, yes, sir. can you tell me, please, is the 1010 to Walmart definitely running tomorrow? Oh, it is. Thank you. No, no, I just wanted to make sure of something. Afternoon, Mrs. Hobley. Oh, rather good evening. 
Oh. Oh, yes, yes. Do come in, Mr. Andrews. Oh, no, I didn't mean to disturb you. I just saw your light on, so thought I'd pop round to see if there was anything I could do. I mean, uh, I did call the other week, the, the first Friday in the month, as usual, but uh, you seem to be out. Well, I, I can give you some of it. Oh, good gracious me, no, I didn't come round for that. Just to see how you're getting on. Well, I'm starting a job soon. Oh, I hope it's an interesting position. Oh, great potential. Good. Um, I can give you seven pounds ten of it. No, you take your own convenience, Mrs. Hobley. I know how it is. We all have to wait for things to come in, cheques to be cleared. Yes, that would leave a balance of 14 pounds, five shillings and eight pence. Yes, you pop it round altogether. It, it does save us on the bookkeeping if we get it as one lump sum. But, but no hurry, no. Well, uh, good night, Mrs. Hobley. Good night, Mr. Andrews. I'm mad, of course. Stone bonkers. Where can I get 14 pounds, five and eightpence by last Friday? Oh, well, there's all the streets. 30 bob in a bucket seat. Oh, how shaming if I failed at that, too. Well, I could finish at four. Hello, Fulham 7901. Hello, right here. Who? Right, of centrifugals, personnel. You came to see me today. Oh, yes, yes, but your secretary's already phoned me. Thank you very much. Well, yes, that was about the other job. That is filled, actually. What? Filled. Uh, but I do have another position which I could offer you, and it's a job where you could leave at four. I could, I could leave sharp at four? Sharp at four? I, I thought you might be interested. Oh, yes. Yes, I would be. Well, I happen to be in need of secretary, and you seem to be the sort of person I've been looking for for a long time, Mrs. Hopley. Really? Yes. The salary for this position, taking into account the number of hours you're prepared to work, is in the region of 12 pounds. Oh, yes, 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 I'm still here, Mr. Boatwright. Uh, could we start Monday? Oh, yes, sir, yes. Nine o'clock Monday morning, then? Yes, sir, nine o'clock Monday. I'll be there. Uh, and uh, uh, you will take this conversation as authority, will you, Mrs. Hoblin? Oh, yes, sir, I'll be there. And I'll have the pleasure of seeing you at nine on Monday, then? Yes, sir. Uh, my old secretary will uh, give you every assistance you need for the first week. Goodbye, then. Goodbye, Mrs. Hoblin. Oh, oh, goodbye, Mr. Boatwright, and thank you. Have a nice weekend, then. Oh, and you too, Mr. Boatwright. Rain, rain, go away. Little Johnny wants to play. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Why, we must do something about these window boxes. Please, you've got to. I'm willing you to, Mr. Boatwright. 
think? Yes, they're all mattered. Yes, I'm a fully qualified shorthand typist. Oh, the second shot. You've got the wrong lift. Yes. Wrong lift. Oh. That one doesn't stop on the way up, only on the way down. No, don't get out. Oh, you shouldn't have got out. It would have taken you to the seventh. Eventually. Still, she can't catch the other one. You should have stayed on. You'd be better with the fast one. Yes. The one you just got out of. You should have stayed on, really. Yes. Fast up, slow down. Stops at each floor, but only going down. The lift you would have got is the slow up and fast down. Still, you can't stop that one on the way up. It's coming back now. Oh, which one? The fast up. That'll do you. The, uh, slow down. Uh, here she is. Uh, this is right. Mm hmm There. All set now for the seventh. Thank you. Not bad, eh? Nice legs. Nice bottom. They always wear roll-ons at interviews. I'm a fully qualified shorthand typist. Peter didn't ask to come into the world. I invited him. I wanted him. we've seen today, we can't let you know straight away, but we will write to you this week, Miss Durbin. One way or the other. And if we should find ourselves suited elsewhere, Miss Durbin, we'll telephone you before five this evening. Before five this evening. I see. Thank you. Since you've been away in Detroit, our normal routine has been to inform my applicants by letter. Detroit says that takes 18% more time. It's only a minor point, sir. Our Detroit branch made 15% more profit than we did last year, Mr. Boatwright. Hardly minor. So let's start the day as we mean to go on, eh? Well, naturally, That's Detroit right. says. Who's next? Yes, please, Miss Fletcher. Miss Keith Williams, sir. Miss Keith Williams? She's hyphenated. Morning. I say it's frightfully good of you to see me. I only wrote on spare. Good morning, Miss Keith Williams. This is Mr. Sutcliffe, one of our directors. So it says you want the private secretary. Did you sit down, Miss yes. Williams? What a lovely spun glass of rather bliss. It's like an earring. Earring? Yes. Well, before we start talking about you, Miss Keith Williams, let me tell you a little of what we do here. You make absolutely vast black pumps, don't you? Great cast iron leviathan. <laughs> there are three main types of pump. Reciprocal, rotary and centrifugal. And who's in gold? Well, these three pumps... Of Orient are. <laughs> Sorry, mm. it just comes out. I look really as daft as I am cabbage looking. Yes, well, uh, thank you very much for coming, Miss Williams. We'll let you know. Something. Yes, right, sir. These are the shortlisted ones? Yes, sir. Makes you think about the others, doesn't it? Next, please, Miss Fletcher. <clears throat> Will you go in, please, Miss Fletcher? Excuse me. Have I time for a phone call? Well, I think I can spare you a few minutes. There are some public telephones outside in the corridor on the left. Thank you. Personnel office, Miss Fletcher speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Skinner. Yes, we have found out about your industrial benefit. You don't get any. Oh, I'm quite sure, Mr. Skinner. Mr. Boatwright is not in the habit of making mistakes. Goodbye. Hello, Brenda. Steve. I'm glad you got back all right. You behave himself on the train? Yes, he kept talking about the boat. Oh, yes, I told him about the lifeboat. Get the job. I don't know yet. I'm just waiting to see your eyes. He's just seeing somebody else. Oh, damn, he's knocking something in the other leg now. Your father's getting the job. I have a feeling. Why?